Hi, hey, welcome to lab five. So this one is going to be focused on uh, a couple different things, but uh, the most important part of this is we're going to be working with LVM. So you remember LVM was the um, partition scheme that you needed to select in order to successfully get through lab one and two. Um, we're going to be working with that, uh, which means that we are going to be manipulating our partitions and uh, basically changing their size and things like that. So, word of warning, um, this is a lab where you can easily break stuff. So, make your backups before you get started with this stuff. All right, that's your warning. Okay, so before we get started with uh, most of the meat of this lab, I wanted to take a moment to sort of, sort of talk about um, using the USB thumb drives in VMware. Um, so, Usually on Windows, what it does is if you insert a USB drive, it's going to automatically try to mount that in the Windows system. And you'll notice if it's mounted in Windows, you can't mount it in Linux. Um, so usually what you probably want to do is make sure that you've like safely removed your USB drive. Um, and then we can usually get to it from over here. So this is, if you could take a look at in the bottom right corner, uh, there should be the status bar here and what I can do is um, connect it and we'll see if that lets me do it and you can see so this time it mounted just fine um, if you run into issues with this like one thing to make sure is just that it's not mounted in your Windows machine um, so let's take a look at this real quick uh, I'm gonna move this over here oh, oops I'm gonna open up files so anything that's mounted uh, will be mounted over here and you can see there's an eject sign. So that's just the way that you safely remove your USB drive in, um, in Linux. Okay, and you can see that I've made my backups here 19th of December, that's not true. 18th of February, that's more like it, right? So yeah, I'm not just, I'm not, I'm actually making backups and stuff as well. So you guys should too. Um, additionally, I'm going to show you a tool around here that you can use. It's under utilities. It's called disks. And so what you can do when you get into here is um, this is a graphical user interface uh, for formatting and repartitioning and manipulating file systems, basically. When you open it up, you'll see um, well, basically anything that's sort of mounted here. So we've got the VMware Virtual IDE CD-ROM. So, you know, if you want to install those Linux utilities, I haven't bothered, but if you want to, you can do that from here. Uh, this is our main file system over here. And then there's a bunch of CentOS stuff over here. Um, so the thing I'm looking for is my Kingston DT. So I go over here. And uh, one thing I want to point out is um, the, the partition scheme that I'm using here is FAT32, okay? And um, so if you're having issues, <clears throat> excuse me, if you're having issues like um, actually recognizing your USB in Linux, um, you got to keep in mind, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't do NTFS very well. Um, you can absolutely use NTFS um, in Linux, but often you need to install different dependencies and stuff like that. And it's not really something that works out of the box every time. Um, for this, it's recommended that you try to partition it as a FAT32 system. Um, so obviously if you're doing this in Windows, I'm going to assume that you're doing it in Windows because if you can't mount it in Linux, you know, you can't partition it and stuff like that but um, it'll look different in Windows obviously uh, usually what you want to do is right click on the uh, USB drive in you know your file explorer and select format and just make sure it's FAT32 um, so this is looking fine obviously like I can mount it I can back everything up into it and so that's all fine so the next thing we're doing is we're going to be working in CentOS 2 for the first part of this lab. So I'm just going to like log in right now. 
Okay. And maybe one of the first things I'll do is make sure I log in as root. There we go. Um, so you've probably used this utility already at one point. If you haven't, uh, now is your chance to play with it. So df and the dash h is just making sure that we see everything in human readable terms. If you don't use it, you get big numbers. I don't like big numbers. I don't want to count the number of 1k blocks. Uh, I want to see it in gigs and stuff like that. So get rid of this again. Okay, so you can see a lot of things. If you remember from what we were doing when we were setting things up, we created a boot partition, we created a home partition, and we created a root partition. And uh, we also created uh, images partition. I'm not sure if I'm seeing it here, but, well, sorry, no. This is CentOS 2, so it does not have an images partition. Right. Uh, but we do have these other ones that we've set up and everything like that. So you can see how much is being in use and uh, everything like that. Um, so keep in mind, uh, when you have these file systems, they you find them under slash dev, and dev is for device, I suppose. Um, what they usually do is um, the first thing that you're setting up will usually be like a SDA or VDA, I suppose. Um, and then if you end up mounting a second machine, uh, a second drive, sorry, it's usually SDB or SVDB. Um, and then all the other, all the extra partitions that you create after that are usually categorized as one, two, three, four, or whatever. Um, so that's just how things work in a sort of basic way. It might be easier if I show this to you under C7 host. So let me pro throw up a terminal over here. And I'll do the same thing under C7 host. Oops. Okay. So as you can see here, I've got root. It's under something called device mapper Cent CentOS C7 host. 84% um, in use. So I'm getting pretty close to having, I'm, I'm getting pretty close to a dangerous area because if I'm adding any extra stuff I might start running out of space on my root drive um, so I'll have to keep a keep an eye on that I suppose um, you can see that I've got an SDA 1 and SDA 2 so these are sort of um, these are my two reboot partitions and uh, SDB is over here and that's going to be my USB drive so if I added another thumb drive here, I might have an SDC. Okay, so in addition to DF-H, uh, which is the one that I'm most familiar with, um, another thing that you can use is uh, DU. Um, DU gives you a lot of different uh, options and things like that. One thing you can do with it is just um, see how much space is being used by your current location and all of its subdirectories and things like that. So if I do it here, uh, not very much happens, but let me see if I just go to CD dash over here, I can you do this. Um, and I can get a like a listing of all the different files and stuff like that. Um, so it can be useful in a lot of different contexts. I'll just control C because I don't care anymore. Oops, let me go over here. Right, so yeah, make sure you uh, make sure you don't have you know the bottom of your window being under your. Uh, I don't know what I'm saying. Okay, so let's do this. So this is giving you the same output again, but uh, this time you're able to just like scroll through it, I guess, and. Additionally, they have a find command that you can use. Um, so we've got find-p. So the find command, the way it works is um, the first argument is where you're going to start your search um, to make it the broadest possible search and to look in the most places, um, we'll search under root. And you can give it different options. Um, so 
this one is size. And um, this is what I'm getting from the notes. How many zeros is that? Oh, I don't know. Maybe something like that. Let's try that. So, yeah, you don't have to use this 100,000K. But the idea here is that we're searching for any file that is uh, greater than 100,000 kilobytes. Um, you don't have to use those. We can use megabytes, we can use gigabytes. So let's take a look at anything that's bigger than 10 giga. And the other thing we got is a proc.k core. Uh, we're not going to worry about that too much. Let's uh, narrow the search. You'll notice also that I'm getting a lot of error messages every time I run this. You usually get some like um, error messages related to permissions or in proc uh, things won't exist because proc aren't really real files. Um, but uh, yeah, it gives you a basic idea. This can be useful for just finding out. Um, this can be useful just for just finding large files. Uh, but usually what I try to do is get rid of the error messages because usually I don't care. So that gives you a little bit of a better um, output, I think. Okay, so the next thing in the lab that you'll notice is uh, talking about um, CronTab. Uh, one of the things they ask you to do is download a uh, disk space monitor sort of script and uh, what you can do is be running this with CronTab. So Cron is um, a utility that will basically, it's like a scheduler. Um, so what you can do is create uh, a script and then run that script at specific times. Um, this is basically designed for uh, servers that are always on. Um, if you want something that's going to work with like machines that you're turning on and off, like your desktop, um, it's recommended to use Anacron, which basically is built on top of Cron, right? So it's all built off the same thing. Um, but I'm not going to go through these steps. I'll let you work on those. It's part of the lab, so don't skip it. Um, but I won't be covering it in this video. Okay, so now we get into the meat of this lab, which is going to be working with LVM. LVM is, stands for Logical Volume Management, and um, it's a newer way of sort of dealing with file systems and mount points and stuff like that. So, uh, let's see, let me go back to here. <clears throat> so, remember we were sort of talking about this sort of uh, scheme of we have mount points over here um, and we have physical file systems over here right so SDA is maybe the um, the virtual hard disk that we created for C7 host and SDB is the USB drive that I've plugged in um, so what LVM allows us to do is um, sort of further abstract this and by abstract, I mean we're sort of like, um, we don't always want to touch the, the, the meat and guts of the thing. Sometimes we just want it to be smoothed over and made easy to work with. Um, so as we go, I can recommend that you uh, look into this a little bit on your own. Um, I found a quite a good uh, video over here. It's introduction to LVM. Um, the link is... <laughs> that link um, probably just easier to go on YouTube and search for it you'll find it um, but here's a good way to they have a pretty good diagram here right so we've got these physical volumes and like I said we have SDA maybe being our primary hard drive SDB was our USB thumb drive and then what we're doing is building on top of this a group a volume group okay so you can almost think about like um, if you have this volume group and you're adding USB drives to it or something like that, you can everything sort of gets recognized as being under one volume group. So that can be very useful. And then on top of this, we're building logical volumes. Okay, so we created all these, all these a lot of these mount points sort of like uh, manually, but it doesn't have to be that way. 
and um, basically the last step here is kind of what you expect to see, right? So the top and the bottom are what you see in DF, and the rest of this is specific to LVM. So this introduces a lot of flexibility. We can do things like uh, shrink volumes, grow volumes, um, take snapshots and things like that. And usually when you're resizing partitions and stuff like that, it can be dicey. You want to make backups of your data before you get into, before you get into that, um, because you can, you know, you can basically wreck stuff, especially if you're reducing a partition, um, you, the data might get lost pretty easily. Um, so keep this sort of diagram in mind as we per continue because there's a lot of moving parts and if you're not familiar with it, uh, it can get very confusing. Okay, so for this, uh, we're going to be continuing in CentOS 2. Uh, so let me pull this over here. And let me make that bigger so I can read it. Okay, so I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna make sure that I'm in CentOS 2. And just to clear the screen for now. Um, the first step we're gonna be doing is, uh, let's just take a look at what is in our um, device location, right? So I'm gonna do ls dev slash vd star and we'll take a look. So we've got a VDA, we've got VDA1 and VDA2. And so the VDA1 and VDA2 are sort of a subset of VDA, okay? Um, if you see SDA and stuff like that, that's also, um, you should notify your instructor about that. Um, so, okay, first thing we're gonna do, let's do a yum install. And what we're going to get is a system storage manager. Okay, we'll take a moment to download this. After we've determined the fastest mirrors. Okay, there yeah, we're complete. Uh, so we can uh, run the command SSM list and what this will give us is um, basically a summary of all the stuff that is here. So again you can see device VDA, VDA1, VDA2. Um, you also see the pool and you see the different volumes and the mount points. So take a moment just to really try and uh, understand what's going on here okay the first table that we have here we have device VDA VDA has a size of 20 gigabytes okay I said VDA 1 and VDA 2 are subsets uh, they're contained inside VDA basically you can see that there's a boot partition of 1 gigabyte in size and then VDA 2 um, sorry, my mouse pointer is not working. Uh, this is probably because uh, it's just being captured. It doesn't, I can't capture it when I'm in a terminal. But you can see that VDA2 um, has a size of 12 gigabytes. And it doesn't tell you that there's a mount point, but it tells you that it is, um, it has a pool um, specified to it. The pool is called CentOS, CentOS2. Now, go to the next table, the middle one, and you can see that we have one thing in this table, and that is CentOS underscore CentOS2, right? So that's the connection. VDA2 is CentOS2, okay? That is our volume group. You can see that we have the type LVM. Uh, there's one device, and it is 12 gigabytes in size, again. That's, that's all the information we got. Um, now the final table is giving you some more information. You can see here that we have um, several things. We've got CentOS 2, root, swap, and home, as well as VDA1. So we know VDA1 is boot, um, XFS, whatever. Um, these other three 
mount points. Um, you know what home is, and you know what root is, and you know that swap is basically um, overflow for our RAM. Basically, if CentOS 2 were to run out of actual memory, um, it could start using swap. And it takes a performance hit, but you don't like basically run out of memory. Okay. Um, you can see that these uh, these um, devices, these mount points, are using EXT4. If you set everything up properly, you can see that uh, root has a size of eight gigabytes, swap has a size of two gigabytes, and home has a size of two gigabytes. So eight plus two plus two equals twelve. Okay, so three different tables with different information and they're all connected. And you can see that root, swap, and home are part of the pool CentOS, CentOS 2. Okay. Let's go back to that table. So again, we have physical volumes, we have a volume group, and then we have logical volumes. And those logical volumes are connected usually with uh, mount points. Okay. Hopefully this is beginning to uh, make sense. Um, if not, just you know, take a moment to look at stuff. Now the next thing that we can do is we can run some commands and see this information in different ways. So the first command I'm going to run is pvs. And with pvs we get different information, but you can see there's a physical volume, which again, device VDA2. The volume group connected to that one is CentOS, CentOS 2. Okay, so this is showing us physical groups, or physical volumes, I should say, rather. So at the bottom of that table. Uh, the next thing I'm going to run is VGS. So I run VGS, I, give, I see the name, CentOS, CentOS 2, uh, one physical volume, and three logical volumes. And the total size for this is 12 gigabytes. So just think about that for a second. We have only one physical volume connected to this, but conceivably you could plug in your USB key and suddenly your entire file system just gets bigger. Kind of neat. And finally, LVS is going to give us the information from that last table, and we're getting higher in the pyramid. Well, it's not really a pyramid, but just thinking about it in a sort of hierarchical fashion we're starting physical volume and logical right we're getting from sort of basic stuff to higher level stuff and again here you can see we've got home we've got root we've got swap and um, we're getting a little bit more detail about attributes um, things like that but again you can see that the size of everything well her home is two gigabytes our root is 8 gigabytes and our swap is 2 gigabytes. So one thing you may have noticed um, when we were doing this before is um, so VDA has a total size of 20 gigabytes um, and looks like we're only using 12 plus 1, right? Um, so it looks like we actually have a little bit of extra space that we can be working with. Um, so what we're going to be doing is um, working with that. So I'm going to enter the command apt-disk dev vda. And keep in mind, if you found that you know everything is using sda here, just replace vda with sda. Okay. So I'm going to run this, and this is f-disk. Okay. Um, Things will remain in memory only until we decide to write them. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to follow the process very carefully. So the first thing we're doing is P. And if you want to know what P is doing, make sure you, you know, use M to get help. Okay. So I'm going to enter the issue the commands. I'm going to do new partition. I'm going to use P for primary. The next one is three, so I'll enter three, or I guess I could just hit enter to accept the default. Um, the first sector is this. Yeah, that's fine. So we want to keep the default here. And what I'll do is enter plus three G. So 
I'm going to hit P. We're going to review what we're going to be doing. Uh, so notice that there's now something called VDA3 there. And it has a beginning and an end. And the, be the beginning of this was whatever the default was. And then uh, we basically are adding two gigabytes to everything. Okay. So that looks good. And I'm going to hit W. And we get a warning. We're going to ignore the warning. So the next thing that we're going to do is we have to reboot this machine in order for the changes to take effect. So we'll do that. And then we'll take a look at how our system has changed. And we're back. So I'm just going to take a moment to log in again. So let's uh, check our work. I'm going to run fdisk-l dev VDA. So we can see that something is there, right? We've got VDA1, VDA2, VDA3. Now that we've rebooted, uh, this, these changes have basically taken hold. They are now real. So if I run df-h, uh, you're going to see, hopefully, do we see it? We definitely have something there. Okay, well, we'll come back to this, I think, in a second. Um, so let's do SSM list again. So um, in this case, we do see VDA3 there. Um, but you'll notice it doesn't have any pool assigned to it. Um, so that means. LVM is not really going to be using this yet, um, so we need to uh, do some extra stuff to make this work with LVM. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is PV create dev VDA3. So this is going to create a physical volume. We've successfully created it. Great. So the next thing we're going to do is make sure that our new uh, physical volume um, is going to be part of the same volume group as the rest of our stuff. So volume group extend CentOS. And I should point out that this name that I'm using here is the one that I remember from VGS, right? So if I just run VGS, I can see that we've got CentOS, CentOS 2, right? So let's go back to that. PV, not PV create, VG extend CentOS underscore CentOS. Check your spelling or you can break things. So VG extend CentOS underscore CentOS 2 dev BDA 3. 3. Okay, am I absolutely sure about my spelling here? E yes, yes, I'm good with this. So I'm going to go ahead. We've successfully extended it. Now let's do another thing. We're going to do LV create large L 2G dash N archive CentOS CentOS 2. Okay, so we've created a logical volume called Archive. And the next thing that we want to do is we're just going to make sure that this is um, set as ext4. Okay, so there we go. Dev CentOS 2 slash Archive. Okay, something happened. Let's take a look at SSM list just to see what's going on. Okay, so now we have, we've done some stuff. We essentially uh, created a new uh, hard drive, if you want to think about that. We uh, created a new physical volume here. We added it 
to CentOS, CentOS 2. And you can see now that in the middle table here, uh, we have two devices connected to this thing. And we now have a total size of 15 gigs. And then finally, uh, we created a logical volume from that. Um, and we have uh, called it archive and we've made sure that it's called um, that it's using the ext4 system so now we can do a lot of um, interesting things with this we can reduce and extend the size of this in lv reduce dash r large l um, the minus or the dash here is a minus sign right so that's going to reduce something and I can use 0.5 G so this is going to shrink it by 500 megabytes or 0.5 gigs and I'll make sure I'm pointing at the right thing CentOS 2 slash archive okay so it's going to do that let's run SSM list and see what we got so you can see archive there and you can see the file system size is now 1.5 gigabytes now we can extend it plus 1g centos underscore centos 2 archive check my spelling spelling looks okay successfully resized So now you can see that the volume size for archive is 2.5. So consider for a moment the applications of this. Um, consider that in business and in a lot of ways when we're dealing with the cloud, we are um, trying to make things as efficient as possible. Um, so this is sort of a case where virtualization comes in really handy. Um, let's say that you are, I don't know, you need to host a web server or something like that and uh, you have all these virtual machines and instead of having just virtual machines with like, you know, 20 gigs for a web server, um, you can make it more dynamic, right? You can have a web server that has a um, variable size of hard drive depending on what's going on. Um, say that you have a web server that is running out of space well when web servers run out of space you can cause a lot of issues and a lot of instability right um, so what if you have something that can dynamically respond to different situations um, so this seems to be where the technology is going and um, it's very useful so to that end um, what we're going to be doing is adding another hard drive I mean it's not it's a virtual hard drive. It's not an actual hard drive, um, but it's going to sort of show the flexibility that we have now with using LVM. Um, there's more setup, as you can see. It's sort of like there's more there's more going on, but um, the the flexibility it gives us uh, makes it worth it. So. Uh, we've gone through this before and you've seen it, hopefully, uh, but yeah, let's just type it in again so we've got this or we've got this right um, so let me grab these instructions so what we're going to be doing is um, working from outside of CentOS 2 and we're going to basically um, create another uh, virtual hard drive so I'm going to throw this over here and we'll follow through with the steps okay so first thing we're going to do uh, I'm going to move uh, the view I'm going to move from console to details so now we're over here and I'm going to go to add hardware I'm going to look for storage, so we're already at storage, and I think I'm going to make this size 2 gigabytes. Make sure that the bus type is vert.io, 
right, so that seems to be all good. There doesn't seem to be any other options that I can see here. So I'll hit finish. Okay, so let's go back to console. Now let's do ls dev vd star. We seem to have something that looks new, right? We have seem to have something called dev slash vdb. So like I say, this is recognizing it as a completely separate piece of hardware that's just appeared. Um, it's almost like we were plugging in one of those USB thumb drives, like you can see from C7 host, right? Um, so now we have to set this up so we can use it. Um, we're going to be using fdisk to create a single primary partition for dev vdb. And we're going to use the entire disk for this one. Uh, we're going to save the partition table and then we'll restart again. Okay, so let's go through the steps again. So I'm going to go back up to the fdisk command and going to type this in. I'm going to be looking at dev vdb this time. Okay. P. I'm going to say new. Okay, we want primary. Default is one, so let's use that. First sector, yep. Okay, I see. So before we were sort of like setting a, a, a normal, like we just like wanted to create two gigs. So the starting block was here and the ending block was there. Uh, this time we're working with the entire file system. Um, so the default that it's giving us should be the last sector. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and accept that. Let's hit P and we can preview this. So the start and the end. That looks about right, hopefully. And let's hit W. Okay, so I'm going to reboot and then I'm going to take a look and uh, make sure that things are looking okay. So, welcome back. Uh, we finished rebooting, we're back in, and let's take a look at what's changed. So, when I'm running SSM list this time, I'm seeing uh, dev VDB and VDB1. So, like I say, VDB1 is a subset of VDB. VDB just kind of indicates that there's a drive there and that we have one partition there called VDB1. The size of that is two gigabytes out of a possible two gigabytes. Got it? So we have one hard drive. We have one partition on that hard drive and it's taking up the entire space that is available. Okay, so the next thing that we might have to do here is um, have this uh, formatted as type ext4, okay? Where is this again? Well, it's living in device, so I'm gonna do vd star again, and you can see that we've got vdb1. Um, so to uh, format this, in a partition, it, like to basically create this as an ext4 file system, I'm going to use that mkfs uh, command again. I'm going to use dash t ext4, and I'm going to point it at vdb1. Okay, so we'll let it go. Seems like maybe it happened. Who knows? Let's take a look at SSM list. So we've got vdb1 there. It's not really giving us any information yet because we're going to have to go through. Oh, yeah, we can see that VDB1 there is type ext4. Okay, great. So we'll continue in a second. 
So now, if you're getting the hang of it, you know that the next step is that we need to make this available to LVM and we have to go through the process. So we're just gonna start by creating a physical volume. Okay, so let's make sure we do that. To create a physical volume, we're gonna use physical volume create, PV create. And we're going to point it at dev bdb1. We're gonna go there, wipe it, yep. Okay, and then we're going to add this to our volume group. So we're going to extend our volume group. The name of our volume group is CentOS, CentOS2, and we're gonna use dev vdb1. Okay, successfully extended, so far so good. If we take a look at SSM list, we can see how it's going. So, We've got three devices now part of our uh, pool, right? Um, and we know what they are. It's VDB1, VDA2, and VDA3. And we have a total size of all about 17 gigabytes. Okay, so what's next? Um, we're going to extend our logical volume. So with this command, what we're basically doing is taking this separate hard drive, if you want to think about it like that. Uh, remember, we were creating it outside of our operating system. So, you know, think about just like adding another hard drive and plugging it in. And we're going to be extending our home, which is very useful, right? Because home is where we put a lot of our, you know, useful stuff. So here's our command, LV extend. Santos, Santos two slash home size plus two gigs. Okay. Let's take a look at SSM list again. So what you should see is that home has grown and um, now we have more space for more stuff. Okay, so we've gone through quite a few steps there. Um, definitely take a moment to be writing down these commands and uh, seeing which commands have changed. Like, so for example, when we're using LV extends and we might be extending one of these or home or archive or whatever. Um, but you'll notice when you're looking at the SSM list here in the bottom table, so we have a mount point for root, we have a mount point for home, we have a mount point for boot, and that hasn't really changed much. Um, we have this thing called archive, but we haven't actually mounted it, which means that we can't really CD into it and we can't really use it yet. Uh, so the next part of this lab is talking about um, mounting and particularly um, there's one command for mounting and then there's also a way to make sure that things are mounted um, on startup. Otherwise you have to call the mount command every time that you want to use a drive, which uh, is kind of a pain in the butt. Um, so we'll move on. Um, I'm going to reboot and then we'll get started with the final key in this or the final piece of this puzzle which is um, mount mounting so I just want to take a moment to sort of uh, connect the dots a little bit when we're working in C7 host like for example when you're um, making your backups right we have um, our file explorer which makes it very easy right um, when you plug in your USB drive and everything is working properly um, it auto mounts for you um, you'll see a message at the top basically saying, you know, like, oh, we have this thing available for you and you can start using it. And when you go to the file explorer, you find it on the side here. Um, so that makes everything really user friendly. Um, but that's not always how it works, unfortunately. So if I use df h uh, again, and you remember hopefully now that we're getting, you know, 
A is the primary hard drive, B is a secondary drive, and uh, that for me is my USB key. Um, and it gives you, it tells you where it's mounted. Okay, so there is a directory here that is essentially containing all the stuff on my USB key, right? So if I go CD run slash media slash my username slash whatever, um, I can get into there and I can see all the stuff that is on my USB key. Okay. Um, so the thing to remember from this is that uh, anything that is mounted um, has a mount point and that's usually just a directory. Okay. So uh, take that and let's extend it into CentOS 2. So let me log in here as root. When I do this, uh, you'll see that I don't have anything that's really like, a, you don't see archive here, do you? Archive was the one that we created after we, ex before we extended our home directory. Um, so we're going to basically mount that. We're going to be mounting it in a different place than slash run slash media. Uh, we're just going to create a new thing in our root. Um, so I'm going to do make directory archive. Okay. And if we're just looking here, um, you can see that I've created archive. It wasn't there before. Now it is. Um, and the next thing I'm going to do is mount my archive directory to it. So the dash t ext4, I'll just specify what kind of file system it is and then where we can find it. So this is where it's living. If I take a moment and undo all my hard work and go to SSM list, you can see that there's CentOS, cent underscore CentOS2 there. And it lives as a, vol a logical volume, but it's not mounted yet, right? You can see in the very bottom table here, uh, the fourth entry, dev CentOS, CentOS2 slash archive. Uh, the mount point is blank. So let's fix that. Let's mount this thing. So mount dash T, ext4. First argument here is where you can find this and this is always going to be a device location okay and then the next argument is where I'm going to be mounting it to okay so this is the directory the empty directory that I just created and that's going to be the new location where I can put my archive stuff okay so now let me run SSM list again we can take a look and what we should see is that the output has changed. Now we have a mount point called archive and we don't have to, we can just CD into it and now I'm in archive and there's something called lost and found in there for me. You don't have to worry about lost and found. Um, and yeah, this is now a location for archives. So some other things that we can do, I can type in mount and I'm going to get a lot of information here. Um, you can see VDA one. Uh, you can you can read on this. You can read through this on your own time if you if you prefer. Um, now the next thing that we can do so we can mount, but we can also unmount. So that's U mount slash archive. So I'll do that. And target is busy. So oh yeah, because I'm in archive, so it won't let me do that. So let me do that. So now that I'm not in archive, I can unmount it, and that's the opposite of mounting it. So think about it like this. If everything's working on your C7 host, when you plug in the USB key and you get the automatic message popping up saying like, you have entered a new thing, um, what it's kind of doing in the background is running this command mount um, and mounting it into a default location. Um, so what you're doing when you're typing this stuff in is basically reproducing that, but uh, in a more hands-on way. 
Now, the thing to keep in mind about uh, mounting is that it is not persistent. Um, as soon as you reboot, all of those um, mount points and stuff um, are gone, unless you are saving them in a file. Um, the name of that file is fstab. So let's take a look at what we have in this fstab thing. Um, so you'll see that there's already stuff in it. If there wasn't anything in it, um, your system would not start because there would be no root, no boot, no home, no nothing. Um, so to make sure that archive is always going to be there, um, we're going to have to edit this file and we're going to put archive into this. Okay. So the way that in the lab that they're getting you to edit this file is just by echoing something into it. Um, so we're going to do that. Um, if you also wanted to, you just open it up in Vim or Nano or whatever you like and just type it, type it in basically. So the first thing in here is where it is as a device, where we want it to be mounted to. So we want to use the slash archive. This thing is an ext4 file system. And I'm just going to enter defaults 1 and 2. Don't worry too much about what the defaults are or what the 1 and 2 mean. Um, if you're interested in, take a look, read about it. Uh, you'll find a lot of resources. Make sure, make absolutely sure that you are not overwriting anything in FSTab. Make sure that you're only appending to FSTab. Do not use one of these arrows. If you do that, you will not get your machine back. You are going to have a very hard time getting all of your stuff back. Okay? So, word of warning, you know, make sure that you're adding to this file and you're not deleting anything in this file. And we'll do Etsy FS tab. Okay. So there we go. Let's take a look. Make absolutely sure. You know what? What you should probably should do is do this to so this is what I should have done. This is what I should have done before I changed anything in the FS tab. This is uh, make a backup. And so if I go back and I take a look inside this file and I don't see anything like root or boot or home or anything like that. Um, I know that I made a mistake and I can go and, um, you know, restore my backup before I try and reboot. Um, also notice all the stuff that was in here before was nicely, um, was all nicely um, tabbed out and everything like that. So there were nice columns. Uh, the thing that I added doesn't have any columns. It really doesn't matter. Uh, it's not going to affect anything except any humans reading this thing will we'll have to you know, read it more carefully. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is reboot and if everything goes according to plan, my CentOS 2 will return and Archive will be mounted by default on startup. So, wish me luck. Okay, reboot complete. This is looking promising. And we are in. So that's good. Let me take a look. Here. And let's go to archive. Archive is there. Oh, yeah. Let me roll log in as root here. Okay. So as you can see, Archive has a mount point there, and um, it's now available for me to use. Um, I have not wrecked my machine, which is good, and uh, that should about do it for this lab. Um, like I say, you know, there was the uh, cron stuff at the beginning, and I didn't cover that, but uh, you know, you should definitely cover that. Um, 
there's a lot to remember for this one, so um, keep in mind that diagram of physical volumes, volume groups, logical volumes, and then mount points based on that. It's a whole, it's a whole edifice with a bottom and a top. Okay, and as you get closer to the top, you get closer to the stuff that um, regular users are interacting with. So hopefully everything went well. Um, if it didn't go well, you know, at least you have your backups, right? Um, and this will give you some ideas about what you can expect on the quiz. So take care for now.